Hey, what's going on everyone? Nick here with another video to talk about Cobra Kai season five. There will be spoilers in case you have not watched this epic season just yet, but if you have, let's go ahead and kick some ass and dive into this damn season. Number one, uh, I'm a huge Karate Kid fan. I have been uh, since I was a kid growing up watching that trilogy. And I understand not everyone was a huge Karate Kid fan, but you know, if you're an 80s um, guy like me, I mean, I'm sitting here rocking the All Valley Karate Championship. Daniel LaRusso beating the bad boy Johnny Lawrence, right? Um, what a great... that Listen, that you can't not like the first Karate Kid movie, all right? I understand if you might not like the second one or the third one, but if you like them all, like me, then you understand the importance because what this show has illustrated is that you can take a 30 year old IP and continue to do right by its original source, the source material and do an epic job. I might sound a little nasally because I'm just dealing with some allergies, but I digress. It's not going to stop me from talking about how much I enjoyed this season. I thought it was fantastic. And I think this show has preceded to show how great it can be and how great it is on a season by season basis. Ever since the first season that premiered on YouTube was great. And then from there, it just continued to get great. You know, season one showed the promise that they, that the showrunners wanted to give us fans. And that's, that's, that's all that matters. You tell a good story and you do right by the fans you don't create create and or we're going to take this IP and we're going to do something else with it. We don't care what other fans think. If they like it, then they don't. They, you know what I'm saying? Like there have been other shows that have failed in comparison to Cobra Kai. Find some people that don't like the show that have actually watched all five seasons. Guaranteed, you won't find anyone. You might find people that might say, yeah, it's a little corny. It's a little campy. And I'll say that as well. There are some corny parts. There are some really campy parts. But that's just the whole gist of it. Even while watching this season, I'm like, yeah, there's a couple of things in here that wouldn't really fly in real, in real life. Like there's a, there's a lot of you know, things over the, over the course of five seasons that wouldn't really fly in real life. A couple you know scenes uh, over the five seasons where the kids are fighting. I'm, I'm just amazed at how lawsuits were never distributed right how the school wasn't you know so much and told i mean i guess they did with with robbie keen and tory getting expelled but at the same time you know in this season when the kids get into fights at the water park and and sure they get, they get kicked out but i mean that that final the finale you know when there's the huge fight at the dojo when uh chosen Johnny and Mike Barnes, they go on to Terry Silver's own property and fight him and his and his goons, the other the other senseis, right? And Chosen gets literally slashed with some weapons and you know, breaking and entering, trespassing. You know, there's a bunch of lawsuits that don't really get any attention. Why? Because it's just it's it's fiction. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't go and do those things because someone's about to get sued uh, and possibly arrested at that point, right? So, all in all, you, when you take the realistic approaches out of it and you apply some suspension of disbelief in this show, you still have a fantastic story. And again, that's what really matters. The characters the story arcs, the character arcs over the course of, of these five seasons, they continue to show that they care. They continue to make us, the viewers, care about them. You know, even as an adult, you can relate to some of these kids based on how you yourself grew up. You know, depending on how you grew up, the situation, the circumstances that you had to deal with, how your parents were, how you are parenting your current children even there's a lot that that is that they've cooked and baked into this show 
that are really, you know, valuable lessons. And it's hard to find those things in other shows. Or maybe other shows try to do that, but they don't really hit the nail on the head. Or they try to do something different that would really take away from the ongoing themes from The Karate Kid 30 years ago. You know, like you've got the the badassery, the classic Johnny, as as Daniel talked about when he was at a low point in this season, when he goes to Johnny for advice and then Johnny's like, what are you doing, man? Like, look at yourself. That says something. It shows where Johnny's come from and it shows where, where Daniel's gone to. But like Mr. Miyagi has always said, must find balance, right? He, there's so much about balance in this show that Daniel tries to teach the kids. The kids try to learn themselves. Like, one of my favorite arcs this season was from Robbie Keane, you know, where he even tries to put his his rival with Miguel, you know, to bury it and to, to put it at ease, we'll let go of it finally. And he finally understands that what what Daniel uh, LaRusso was trying to teach him, it, it finally clicked. You know, he understands what Cobra Kai was doing to him. He, he understood when he tried to take someone under his own wing with, with Kenny. And, and as you could see what Kenny started to do. And even then for Kenny to have this, this you know, arc from last season to where the season finale of season five happened. And realizing once Terry Silver was exposed, where is he at? Well, the pun, a bunch of people just left Cobra Kai. And rightfully so. But that being said, you know, all the actors were great. Kudos to the writers, kudos to the showrunners and, and the actors themselves, even the, even the, you know, the kids um, who are, you know, uh, not so much kids anymore, but young adults at this point. You know, they're, they're continuing to do such a phenomenal job. Uh, and it's really great to see them grow as actors um, and their characters, too. And I feel like for a show like Cobra Kai where the episodes aren't super long, you know, at least a half hour to maybe 50 minutes, 45 minutes. You could just, I mean, we binged it over the weekend and it's just so e easy. And at that point, if a show is easy to binge, you know, it's good. You know, when you have a show that you're being distracted on, you know, like you pause it, you got to, you know, rewind it because you missed a part. To me, that's not a show that really embraces your attention. And to me, I, I was full on board, and I have been, you know, since season one, which I really, really liked this season. Don't get me wrong, but I still think the first season is the best. But this is probably my second favorite season, and then I don't know how I would how I would rank two, three, and four. Um, I'd pop, I'd probably put them in a three way tie, to be honest with you, and. I'm not sure where season six is going to go. We know that John Kreese has escaped, which, you know, when when he gets stabbed, when he gets shanked, I'm like, dang. I guess that's one way for Kreese to go out. It would make sense for him to die in, in you know, in prison. But they set it up so he could get out, you know, and, and they, they tricked everyone. And I obviously, like, Again, the realistic factor, that prob probably would not happen in real life, right? But at that point, um, you know, the guard who's checking on his pulse, how did he not, uh, you know, realize that, like, it just wasn't catch up and he's not really dying, like, his pulse isn't slowing down at that point from blood loss and it's just a simple packet bursting and, and not actual blood continuing to leak out as, as a, uh, a stab wound normally would. So... Sorry, guard, you didn't do a great job. <laughs> Again, suspension of disbelief, but I'm kind of curious to see where the sixth season is going to go. We haven't gotten an official renewal yet, which blows my mind. Uh, maybe they're just waiting a little bit further from the showrunners to maybe give Netflix a little more of a solidified script with some ideas. Um, or maybe they're just keeping it under wraps and they don't want to really give uh, any spoilers away for people who haven't seen it yet. Because if you know... Before you watch season five, if there's going to be a season six, then you know that any consequences that may happen at the end of season five are null and void, right? 
oh yeah, Terry Silver gets arrested. It doesn't mean anything. John Kreese gets, you know, escapes prison. It doesn't mean anything. Cobra Kai is dissolving. It doesn't mean anything. But it's the Takai event, Sakai Takai event that comes in season six for sure, which is going to be awesome to see the growth of Miyagi Fang, I guess, is kind of wondering what they might call it. Because they're not going to call it Miyagi Do and Eagle Fang, so you got to com- you got to combine the two, right? Eagle Do, Eagle Miyagi, Miyagi Eagle, Miyagi Fang sounds the best, right? So we're probably going to get a name solidification on, on the combination of of styles. And speaking of styles, I love that final showdown between Terry Silver and Daniel Russo on Cobra Kai's home turf. In the dojo, all the kids, his wife's there. Every, you know, aside from Johnny, Mike, and Chosen, who are dealing with their own battle on Terry's home front, you we see the Karate Kid Part Three scene going down, where Terry Silver's teaching him, teaching Daniel at that point in his life, his own moves. He goes the three steps, and and. It, it was great to almost see Terry Silver's shock on like realizing what he's doing after all this time. Like Daniel remembered it. And it's like, this is how you beat him. This is how you surprise him with the own methods that took place 30 years ago. Right. Great, great writing to bring that back. Great execution just for the character standpoint to show and bring that in and essentially beat the guy who's, been such a snake and has pulled the hood over hundreds of kids and people and they finally see they see terry silver for who for who he really is and what he really is and then they leave so the bigger question is all the kids that embarked in martial arts what do they do will cobra kai as a dojo still exist or will all those locations close down? Who knows? What about the other senseis? Are they going back to their respective uh, homes or countries? So one sensei I'm kind of curious to see what ends up happening with is with Kim Dae-un. She was a badass. You can't deny that. She was super strict and hard on the students. Uh, rightfully so because of what she was hoping to achieve with Terry Silver for um, for her father, I believe it was, and uh, or uncle. Um, either way, she had a mission. It didn't go as planned. Will she return in season six? Maybe she has some someone or something that will tie into the the World uh, Takai tournament. We'll see. It'd be cool to kind of see her come back, but. Uh, I know some of the showrunners said they have some tr- um, some tricks under under their sleeves still. So at that point, what goes beyond season six? I'm sure if they enter the Takai tournament, someone's going to win. Will it be someone from Miyagi Do? How many other students might join Miyagi Do? Like I could see Devin and Tori joining Miyagi Do to have more. Um, girls fighting in the tournament um, and I think you know overall that would help strengthen their story arc um, as the individual characters and then again over the entirety of um, the show and what Miyagi-Do has sort of you know built into become um, I could honestly see Kenny also joining Miyagi-Do not so sure about Kyler but Maybe he just gives up and continues to be um, an ass. Who knows? We'll see. But um, yeah, uh, just super impressed with with this season overall. Loved it. I don't know if we'll see any other throwbacks, perhaps, of the next Karate Kid environment, a.k.a. Hillary Swank. Maybe. Even if it's just for a scene, you know, like I thought Mike Barnes would have a bigger role in this season. And I'm not going to count him out either, even though I think his arc might have ended because we get to see where he is 
in this point of his life, right? He's got his life together. Um, he hasn't, you know, spoken with Terry Silver ever since the Karate Kid Part Three, and uh, even though he he ousted Terry Silver's attorney and paid for it dearly by having his entire furniture store burned down, and obviously there's problems with his family after that and his wife, but uh, because he has that uh, was it the the Rembrandt painting, which should suffice for a, a new furniture store, maybe. So they don't have to bring him back. They could if maybe they really wanted to do it. They found a good purpose for him. Um, like, I don't think he's going to go evil or anything like that. Um, and can I just say, like, the entire time when he gets knocked out at Terry Silver's place and Johnny's, like, fighting what, four guys at once and, you know, he finally wakes up at just the right moment, I'm like, the entire time I'm like, where's Barnes? Where's Mike Barnes? He's got to wake up sometime um, to help Johnny out. Um, Cause obviously Johnny's getting literally shit kicked out of him. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, what a, what a great, what a great season. If you haven't watched it, I, I highly, highly recommend watching this season. Um, and uh, if you have any comments, uh, you want to chat further about it, I could probably keep talking about it, but I want to you know make this into an hour long video. So um, yeah, comment in the comment section below and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.